the Scottish Highlands. Striking mountain ranges dominate this region surrounding Scotland's longest lake, Loch Linne. The original Harry Potter steam train stops in the biggest town of these highlands. Welcome to Fort William. Please drive carefully. Obviously, not something these guys pay attention to. The tents and the tension are building up. Round three of the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup presented by Shimano is getting started. Fort William is the legendary stop with the biggest and loudest crowds. So many stories and so much history has been made on these windswept slopes of Oanach Moor. And it's a very special year this year. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. So this is the 10th anniversary of the World Cup here in Fort William. It's, um, it doesn't seem like 10 years, but uh, the first, very first year it was a much smaller affair very difficult, we didn't know what we were doing, uh, so it was very strange, but now we've got to the stage where we think we put on a pretty good event. A pretty good event with a pretty good four cross track. The track is really good, they, they change it a lot, uh, like I mean the first straight, second straight, and on a second straight there's something what's not as usual on the four cross track, there's some kind of rollers, where you gotta jump on a, on a flat, like on a motorbike, so it's I think it's going to be really interesting for the spectators just to watch the race and there is lots of lines, the turns are slippery so I think there will be some good racing on the track. I think the good uh, thing about the track is it's fast and it's slow so it gets the people back together yeah. which is good for spectators so there's more possibilities to overtake. I think it's going to be interesting for racing. All right, sounds good, and we jump straight into the women's four cross racing, which takes place without world champion Anita Molchik, who broke her leg during training back home in Austria. All right, semifinal heat number one with Melissa Buell, Celine Gro, Lucia Utchin, Luana Maria de Souza Oliveira. She's from Brazil riding a downhill bike. Buell, one of the favorites here, but it's Utchin getting the whole shot. And at the finish line, French rider Celine Gro and Swiss rider Lucia Utchin moving on to the final. All right, semi-final number two here, Annika Bierton, Steffi Marth, Nicola Anderson, and Joey Goff from Great Britain. It's her first World Cup since 2007. She's just taking part for fun today, and look at this. She's got the whole shot. She's out in the lead. Annika Bierton struggling back there in third, having a bit of trouble on the rollers, but she is working hard, taking the outside line there towards the tabletops, trying her best to get a pass in. Joey Goff still out in front. Annika Bierton taking the inside line hard on the brakes and straight back on the pedals, and it's going to be Joey Goff with an incredible performance today winning this semi-final moving on to the final with Annika Beert nicely done ladies all right, women's four cross final here with Lucia Oitchen, Annika Bierton, Celine Gro, and Joey Goff. Big return to four cross for her today. She's been fantastic making it into this final. And here we go. Goff getting the whole shot once again. Wow, she has had incredible starts today. Annika Bierton right there with her, not letting her get too far away. Annika Bierton, I think, may have been a little bit surprised by the speed of this young British lady, Joey Goff. Bierton trying to make a pass on the inside line. Goff holding her off. She moves to the inside on the other corner and they bump shoulders. Oh, and my goodness, she makes a wonderful pass going towards the rock garden. Annika Bierton, where she is strongest in the technical, takes a huge lead. Joey Goff couldn't get through the rock garden smoothly. Annika Bierton wins her second World Cup four cross of the season. And Joey Goff with a fantastic showing today coming in second place. Unbelievable. I've been coming here for so many years. I think like this is my eighth time or ninth time that I'm racing here and I never won. And they made some changes to the track and I, I really like the track now and to finally pull it off in Fort William with you know it's such an awesome crowd every year. It's just uh yeah I was really working hard to get this one and I finally got it. Here is the podium for the women's four cross with a very happy Annika Bierton in first place. Second goes to Goff, third, Urchin, fourth gross. Fifth goes to Buell, sixth Marth, seventh De Souza Oliveira, and eighth Anderson. Bierton keeps her first place in the current World Cup standings, followed by Urchin and Gro, 
both in second, then Goff, Griffith, Buell, Molchik, and Marth. Okay, we're going straight to men's four-cross semifinal heat number one. Roger Rindeknecht against Thomas Slavic, Jared Graves, and Romain Saladini. Graves surprisingly choosing gate number three, and I don't know if that's the best choice for him today, as they are out and they have a good start. Slavic beating Graves for the first time out of the gate, getting the whole shot. Graves close in second, Rindeknecht third. Saladini well back in fourth, the young French talent not having a great start today. Graves doing his best to attack, but he's falling back to third place now. And now he's even falling back to fourth place with Saladini taking an inside line there towards the Rock Garden. Wow, look at Slavic go. Graves in real trouble. What a surprise here. Slavic and Rinderknecht moving to the final. Huge disappointment for the normally unbeatable Jared Graves. Okay, back to the top of the course for men's semi-final number two in four cross here. We've got Joost Wichmann going up against David Graf, Michael Prokop, and Lucas Matura. And they're on course. Prokop getting an early lead here, but it is tight. As they come towards the first corner, Prokop still in the lead. And there is Wichmann getting past. Here we go. It looks like it's going to be Matura and Graf crashing into each other. Oh, they take each other out. Wichmann makes the pass. And now it's Wichmann and Prokop going up against each other. Here comes Graf. He gets the outside line, takes the lead. Vickman, Joost Vickman back on his bike first and it's going to be Graf crossing the finish line with Joost Vickman chasing right into second place. Those two guys advance to the final. What a crazy semi! All right, here we go. We've got the lineup for our men's four cross finals. Roger Rindeknecht, Thomas Slavic, Joost Wickman, and David Graf going up against each other, ready for the gate drop. And the gate opens, and it's Joost Wickman with the whole shot straight out of the gate to the lead, looking good, straight on the pedals. Roger Rindeknecht in second place at the moment, Graf third, and the world champ Slavic sitting back in fourth place. Vickman having a great run. Looks like he can take the victory here as he goes around the inside of that gate heading towards the Rock Garden. Second gate, here comes the Rock Garden. Oh, look at this. Vickman over the bars going down hard and that is game over for Joost Vickman and he even takes out his teammate Thomas Slavic. Rinderknecht having a clean run through with Graf in second position and that means Rinderknecht takes home a lucky win here in Fort William. I had a back crash in practice, hurt my foot pretty bad. Took it easy yesterday in qualifying and only qualified 16. So I really didn't know what to expect. Just tried to black it out, black the pain out and don't think about it and it worked out and pulled it off. I was in front, like I had a good shot and everything went well. And then the turn before the rock garden, my front wheel washed away a little bit. So I had to clip out, but I thought I was clip in again. And then I went off the rocks and my feet came off the pedals again and before I knew it I did a front flip and the crowd was woo and I thought hmm <laughs> it's shit. Say that I took myself and Tom out. Yeah. It's a team, eh? We help each other. <laughs> hey, I felt today more like Mortal Kombat. It was crazy, you know. So many passing on a track. Yeah, as I said, that we will see good racing, that will happen, we saw good racing, you know. The men's four-cross podium in Fort William with Swiss rider Roger Rindeknecht in first place and his neighbor from back home, David Graf, taking second place. Unlucky teammates Slavic and Wichtman in third and fourth, then Graves, who won the consolation final, Prokop, Matura and Saladini rounding out the top eight. Jared Graves still leads on the World Cup standings, then Rindeknecht and Graf, Prokop, Wichtman, Slavic, Fischbach and Morosi rounding out the top eight. Meanwhile, UK's downhill legend Rob Warner swapped his commentary chair for a bike saddle to ride this epic course, a track which has claimed its fair share of victims over the years. Good luck, Rob, and yes, legend, because you're old, buddy. Yeah, the course is uh, fundamentally the same as it's always been. There's a new um, section in the middle after the only really what you'd call traditionally technical, wet, rooty rocks, mud, uh, wooded section, and then it comes out and there's this huge drop, and it's like... I don't know, it's probably 20 feet down to where the landing is, but the landing's so steep, they're all doing it easily. Um, luckily I didn't manage to go off it by accident, or I'd probably be in hospital now. And uh, yeah, the course is as brutal and as rough as it ever is. You know, this is, of all the courses on the World Cup, it's probably the fastest, the roughest, 
um, and the most physically challenging, and, and for the bikes as well. It's really hard. It's a, it's a real man's course. Last year's winner, G, sister Rachel and brother Dan. The three Athertons are back. Rachel and Dan fully recovered from their injuries and with the whole family being reunited again, the tent is getting busy. Yeah, it's, it's pretty funny being back, you know, racing all three of us together and like straight away, like G's shouting at me for leaving my knee pads everywhere and, and Dan's trying to like just eat all the food, you know, and it's, it's cool <laughs> because we all get on like real good and fight and that's just how we work. Yeah, it's cool being back with with G and Rach, you know, I, I definitely missed it last year. As, as well as been injured, there's the whole like, just a complete change of lifestyle, you know. I, I miss G and Rach when they're away racing, and it's cool to just be back on the road. And this man is the head of this family affair, the man behind the most successful family in downhill mountain biking, Father Simon Atherton, who knows his kids best. Characters, right, let's start with Dan. He's really laid back and calm. He never gets flustered, he just he just keeps everything to himself and keeps really cool. Um, G, G's good under pressure, he, he likes the pressure, it makes him race faster. Um, he likes that, if it's close, he likes the competition. And Rach, Rach, she's the feisty one, she's really fiery, got a real temper on her and um, she just wants to win all the time and she just races against the boys, always competes with the boys, so they're all quite different characters. And G and Rach, they're the fiery ones. They, you often hear them having an argument and getting really, and Dan just keeps calm and just keeps everything cool. So it works well with three of them here. Coming all the way from Canada to Fort William to shoot their new movie, Strength in Numbers, is the notorious Ant Hill Films crew. Their premiere film, Follow Me, is a milestone in mountain bike movie history, featuring the best riders in the world. What's unique about the Anto crew is that we all work as a team, so there's four filmers on our crew. We're on every shoot together, so we really um, always make sure that we work as a team and uh, help each other out, and that's really the, the strategy behind the way we make our films. And we just try to use uh, as much um, influence from the kind of Hollywood rigging and the, the camera movement that you would see in, in larger budget productions. And what we've done is, is try to make that kit as lightweight as possible uh, so we can carry it up into the mountain. Hey, my name's Brendan. I filmed with the Ant Hill dudes who are filming Follow Me. Because there's four of them all working together with the cameras, they've got four different angles, four different minds thinking of stuff, four different ideas. Um, everything's just, um, it's pretty amazing. You know when you film with them, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get let down when you watch the final product. And we go straight to the women's downhill race with French pocket rocket Emeline Arago on track. Still riding with a broken ankle, she takes the lead for now. This French lady won the last two downhill World Cups here in Fort William. Sabrina Jeanier. She's got a good run going on, coming through the finish line 6.6 .6 seconds faster than Rago, but she is not happy. Too slow, definitely too slow. It's not going to be the winning time for sure. Next up we have the American national champion Jill Kintner. The Olympic bronze medalist in BMX only started racing downhill last year. She comes through the finish line with the second best time so far. On track now, we have French rider Miriam Nicole, and so far, Jeanier does not like what she's seeing. No wonder, pedaling hard on the flat section, Nicole is already faster than Jeanier. Taking the first of the three jumps, she races through to the finish line, 1.8 seconds faster than Sabrina Jeanier. And we go back to the top, there are three more girls to go. Florian Pougain, fluid on the top section. Very windy that first section as well. The Scott 11 rider is pedaling hard over the last section, moving into the hot seat with the fastest time of the day so far. Now the woman the crowd has been waiting for, world champion Tracy Mosley on course. 
Mosley has won four times on this course and it really suits her style of riding. She recently raced the Cross Country World Cup in Dalby Forest two weeks before, so she is very fit and she does not show any signs of fatigue at all as she just gets on the pedals every chance she possibly can to keep the speed up on this very long course here in Fort William. A huge jump into the bottom section. She keeps control of the bike down through that very steep drop and here we go. The last sprint to the finish. She's on the pedals quickly over the last jump. A little pop on the pedals across the finish line. Holy smoke, she obliterated the fastest time by seven and a half seconds. Unbelievable. All right, now on track, the last rider. Can Rachel Atherton take her first win in Fort William on home soil after returning from a shoulder injury? There's going to be a lot of questions in her mind whether she has the confidence or not to do that. She's looking good so far, but she is a little bit back at the split time. Not very far back, though, and she's got a great finish kick, so let's see if she can put it together. Coming towards the finish line here. Oh, and she's just shy of the top spot. Second place with a great comeback for Rachel Atherton. Tracy Mosley taking a record-breaking fifth win on home soil. It's awesome. The crowd's just amazing. It's such a pleasure to ride and it really makes you push harder and harder. And it means a lot today to win here. Five times here and another World Cup win, so happy. The podium for the women's downhill in Fort William. Two homegrown riders in first and second. Mosley and Atherton. Pugat takes third. Nicole fourth. Jeanier fifth. Kintner sixth. Rago seventh. And Carpenter rounding out the top eight. Tracy Mosley extends her World Cup lead with incredible back-to-back -back wins. Second goes to Pugin and third, Jeanier. From one Atherton, we go straight to the next. Dan is on track, but the brutal course takes its toll. Not on the rider this time, but on his bike. A flat tire delays his dream of a big comeback after his neck injury. <laughs> I felt like I was going good and got a puncher, but uh, that's racing and you know, you get knocked down and you have to get back up. And here comes the rider who left everyone speechless. Brooke McDonald from New Zealand, five seconds up and heading straight across the finish line and onto the hot seat. Another Kiwi rider on the track, and he was a big surprise last year with an amazing second place, Cameron Cole. But it doesn't look like he can beat McDonald's time. He is 1.81 behind McDonald across the finish line. All right, time for this crowd to go crazy. Living legend Steve Pete is on course. He is 3.874 seconds up at the first split. Petey won the World Cup Fort William event back in 2005. He's had a couple of rough years here, running into a tree a few years back in 2007, going hard on the pedals, and he is a great battler and a great peddler coming towards the finish line, and he is across with, oh, he's 4.5 seconds slower than the Kiwi rider who has never podiumed so far. Brooke McDonald still holding on to the lead, and the atmosphere in the finish area is electric. Fabian Burrell having an unlucky day, crashing in the top section, and McDonald still in the lead. I don't know, I just put the middle down and just grinding my teeth and it was just pedaling hard and I had a good run at the top, so I'm happy with my run. Sick. Also hoping to have a sick run is current world champ Sam Hill, the man with the biggest hands in mountain bike. He is on track rocking the pink specialized demo only this weekend to bring awareness to breast cancer. And after the race, all his clothing and the bike will be auctioned off for a good cause. He was world champ in Fort William in 2007, so this track really suits him. Last jump to the finish line, looking real good. Will he be fast enough? No! Sam Hill is in third. With more than two and a half seconds off the pace, and he does not look happy with that result. All right, coming out of the start gate, world championship silver medalist Steve Smith from Canada. The MS Evil Racing rider managed to break a bone every time he's ridden here in Fort William. Hopefully he can stay on top of his bike today. Shows how brutal the track is, really bumpy everywhere, slides out and goes down, puts a knee down, no damage done, 
the knee pad slipped down a bit, you can see that, but he's right back on his bike and right back on the pedals, but he's not going to have a best time today. He's more than three seconds, almost four seconds off pace. From New Zealand, Justin Leov riding for the Trek World Racing Team is at the start and on course now. Nice and smooth through the top section into the woods here. It's a little bit muddy and there's that big 20 foot drop. Good steep re-entry. Nice and clean through this very curvy section right here. It's super technical, got a little bit slower in there, and at the split time, he's 2.8 seconds behind his fellow countryman, Brooke McDonald, who now has the hot seat. The last sprint to the finish line, Leov comes across, he actually improved his time, taking over third place. All right, the next man who needs no introduction, Greg Minar riding for Santa Cruz Syndicate, coming down the slope of Onak Moor. He's won three downhill World Cups and one four cross World Cup here in Fort William, competing every year for the last 10 years. So he knows this course very well. First split right there, and he was ahead of the time. Pretty quick, nine, two seconds up at the first split. He had a disappointing second place on home soil at the first round in Peter Maritzburg. So he is determined to do well here, looking fairly smooth through this rocky section. Lots of curves here, and he is solid on the bike, getting on the pedals. Every chance he's got to try and get as much speed out of that Santa Cruz bike as he possibly can. Through the wooded section, look at him. He is pounding those pedals, trying to pull every second out of this course. Here he comes down the line. It is the last stretch to the finish line. Greg Minar, solid as always. The last jump, smooth as butter. Will he do it? He does it, and he is almost two seconds faster than Brooke McDonald. He's got the hot seat, and he looks happy with that run with three more riders to go. This youngster from Northern England, Team Giant rider Danny Hart, will have nothing to lose getting on course here. He's got plenty of future ahead of him. He's just 19 years old, and he is absolutely on a suicide mission. Look at the first split time. He's already more than a second faster than Greg Minar. Oh, my goodness. He loses his footing, but he keeps Keeps the momentum going right back on the pedals. Will that cost him? He was fast enough. It might not cause any problems. And he is just all over this course, attacking it. And he's got the fastest time again through the second split. Unbelievable run from this young guy. He only weighs 62 kilos. He is a featherweight coming towards the last one, styling out the last jump. Will he be fast enough? No. Holy smoke. So Danny Hart takes second place with an absolute monumental crazy run. That was unreal. An amazing run from Danny Hart. Everybody giving this young kid props. What an incredible attack of this course as we go back to the top. Okay, this man won his first World Cup last year in Fort William on home soil. G. Atherton riding for Common Cell is on his favorite course. And look at this, he's already 1.384 seconds faster at the first split time. G. Atherton looking great. He's lost a bit of time, but he's still 0.242 seconds faster. The last jump to the finish line. Will G do it? He's crossing over and he doesn't. He's plus 3.004 seconds. So he is behind in fourth place. And that means only one more man can do it. The fastest guy in the time trials. And this guy, wow, he was so fast in Peter Maritzburg, blowing away the fastest time by like seven seconds. And here he's already faster by eight hundreds of a second Aaron Gwynn from the USA second split time and look at this the late kick from this guy is absolutely incredible he's five seconds faster but unfortunately he had a crash up top so that cost him and he sits in fifth place crossing the finish line plus three seconds a great run for Greg Minar the winner here It was a hard race, but man, I'm proud. Danny Hart, Brooke McDonald up there. Unlucky for G at a mechanic car. I'm not sure what happened with uh, Gwenny, but man, I'm stoked to be here. At the top, I made a few big mistakes. Like, I rode the saddle and, and then I lost the back end, but uh, to come down and be guaranteed podium pretty much is like the best feeling ever. So good, yes. 
South African rider Greg Minard takes his fifth World Cup win here in Fort William with two newcomers in second and third and ecstatic Danny Hart and Brooke McDonald. Last year's winner G. Atherton takes fourth place. Gwyn, even with this crash, still in fifth goal in sixth, Blankensop seventh and Leoff eighth. Taking the World Cup lead with his win in Fort William, Greg Minard at the top. Gwyn's in second place strong, Atherton in third. That was it for Fort William, but the third round of the UCI World Cup in Leogang, Austria is only a week away. Don't miss it.